Thank you, Can Corla. Like many of my colleagues, I too want to offer my sincere sympathy to the family of Dulciana Carter and express my deep concern to the families of those children who find themselves in the middle of this medical crisis. But our role here today, of course, is to ensure that lessons are learned and that action is taken to fully implement those learnings. Now, Minister, I listened to your contribution earlier and I do welcome your reassurance that the terms of reference have been deliberately written to be as all-encompassing as needs be. You said that the independent consultant can expand the terms of reference to be as wide and as deep as he wants. And you said parents will have a real and meaningful impact into determining the terms of reference. I generally, genuinely hope this is true because at, at the very least, parents and patients can expect after the series of totally unacceptable mistakes that have been made. And I'm using the word mistake for now because as of now, that's the only word I can use. But we need to get to the bottom of this. And as I said earlier, not just learn lessons, but make sure we implement all of the learnings at all levels of responsibility. Minister, I can't imagine the agony of parents reading this CHI report. Just the one stat I'll mention, many people have mentioned it, and that's the 81.2% of patients required further unexpected surgery. That word, unexpected, just hit me in the stomach. I can't imagine how parents and patients felt. The report from the Boston Children's Hospital at 27 patients, sorry, pages, contains a very long, long list of recommendations. But if I were to try and summarise them, it would come down to a serious lack of good governance, a serious lack of teamwork emanating from the top, an inexcusable absence of fairly basic checklists pre and post op, and many others, and I'll come back to them in the questions and answers. But as Deputy Connolly said, and this is really important, none of these reports were published proactively, and it took Deputy Murphy and others to ensure they were. Finally, can I say, Minister, I was totally shocked, like others, to see that non-CE marked unregulated medical devices were used. In my time in the European Parliament, I was very closely involved with the most recent update of the Medical Devices Directive. And I remember at the time, unregulated devices being introduced into the healthcare system in France and a number of other countries. And the motive at that time was corruption. Now, I'm not saying it was anything like that here. I'm not making any comparisons. But I was absolutely shocked that such a thing could happen in a hospital hospital in Ireland. Despite the new regs we put in place, which I thought were comprehensive, despite the checklists around procurement, despite all the checks in the supply chain under the auspices of the HPRA, who act as Ireland's notified body, despite the internal checks within the hospital, unregulated devices were used. How did this happen? I'll come back to this later, Minister.